I've got my vocal cords warmed up to cash in my lost bet against Wayne. Plus, we'll have your listener feedback and our preview of the divisional playoff game against the Rams coming up next on your Packers Fan Podcast. Are you ready for some Packers playoff football? I had a feeling you were. I'm Wayne Henderson from MediaVoiceOvers.com, and I think Aaron Rodgers' suggestion to the entire Packers team leading up to the divisional game was spot on when he said, don't catch COVID. Very good advice. Uh, I'm Scott Clark from The Gaming Outsider, and this is episode 223. I have to admit, it was kind of nice having a stress-free Sunday this weekend. Let's hope we get another one this weekend, since we are playing on Saturday. On this Divisional Playoff Preview special episode of the show by fans and for fans of your 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers, we love sharing your great listener feedback, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And later in the show, unfortunately, I'll serenade you all with a song featuring Packers-related lyrics written by this season's Packers fan podcast Wager O Fun winner, Sir Wayne. And, of course, we're going to preview the LA Rams at Green Bay Packers Divisional Playoff game including Scott's keys to a Packers victory over the sun-loving Rams. So let's go ahead this week, since we don't have a game to recap necessarily, at least not a Packers one. So let's have the Packers fan podcast listeners help set the NFC Divisional Playoff stage. Remember to have our voicemail ready, because after we beat the Rams, you're going to want to call us at 920-3-PACK-GO. Again, 920-3-PACK-GO. Or from anywhere in the world, record your message, attach it to an email, and send it to feedback at PackersFanPodcast.com. And as always, the deadline to get it to us is Sunday night at midnight. All right, this is Dan from Indy. I'm going to try to go through these games real fast. Uh, Buffalo over Indy. That was a really tight game. I was really impressed with Josh Allen. The Ravens over the Titans. Derrick Henry, 40 yards on 18 carries. Wow. Uh, the Baltimore defense is real. Lamar Jackson, however, is not a real man because he is a poor winner. With 25 seconds left in the game, he went into the tunnel, and then he didn't come back out to congratulate the, or at least shake hands with the Titans because he was his feelings were hurt because they danced on the Baltimore Ravens logo a couple of weeks ago. But you know what happened this week? The Ravens danced on the Titans logo. So, yeah, mixed messages there. Cleveland at Pittsburgh. Wow, five turnovers, four interceptions by Big Ben, one fumble. Uh, alternative points, I think this will be the last season we see, uh, unfortunately, with uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger. L.A. over Seattle. I did not expect L.A. to beat Seattle at all, especially the fact that uh, their second-string quarterback was a starter and Goff just went, underwent surgery and he still played the game. And then, for some strange reason... Their third string quarterback was inactive. Well, I don't understand. I don't get that one. Um, Tampa Bay over Washington. I was really hoping Washington win, Washington would win because I hate Tom Brady. Um, but it is what it is. Heineke did a great job. He was a, a third string quarterback uh, out of Old Dominion University, which is right down the road from uh, Andover, Maryland. And then New Orleans beat Chicago, as I think we all expected. What I did not expect was the great broadcast that was uh, on Nickelodeon. A lot of people made fun of it. Uh, But, you know, it's a marketing genius. I loved the the broadcast. It was fun. It really explained a lot of things to uh, uh, new viewers and kids that probably may have never even watched football in their life. So I really loved it. And now I'm going to have to channel my inner WWF rock, the rock. Because the question of the week was, who is going to be playing the Packers? Well, it doesn't matter who we're going to play because the jabroni beating, pie eating, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, kicking doors down, ain't going to stop, ain't going to knock. Los Angeles Rams getting their butts beat by the Real Americans team, the Green Bay Packers are going to take them down to the No Euro Boulevard on the corner of Jabroni Drive and check you directly in to the Shut Your Mouth Hotel where the pack will layeth the smackdown all over your candy. 
And that's the bottom line. Uh, thank you, Dan, for that awesome email at the end. I know nothing about wrestling, but uh, that was pretty hilarious. Uh, I'm, I'm glad somebody brought up the Nickelodeon thing, because when I first heard that a game is going to be streaming a Nickelodeon, I kind of raised my eyebrow like The Rock. You know, that what is going on? And while I didn't get a chance to watch it, I unfortunately don't have Nickelodeon. They showed a, a couple highlights of it, uh, you know, during during the game when it was on the other station. And they did some fun stuff, like whenever the touchdown was scored, they sprayed the entire thing with green slime, like digitally. Did you see any of it? It was kind of cool. I think I only saw the highlights that you were talking about, the the getting slimed and all of that good stuff. They can mm-hmm. take it to the next level. And like in a Packers game, when we go way ahead and victory is assured, there could be an animated dagger just slicing right into the middle of the field. <laughs> and, and they could, could do, do all that. kinds of things. They could go bonkers. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect when they said Nick Colonian was going to do the game and i guess because of the live broadcast i guess one f-bomb made it through so wow nickelodeon <laughs> from a player or i assume it's from a player i would i would think it was not from the broadcast crew but you know well they, they showed the broadcasters from nickelodeon who were obviously much younger and i kind of wanted to see how they did it because dan mentioned in his voicemail how they kind of explained the game. I don't want to say like dumb it down or whatever, but I, you know, I kind of like how they're introducing it to a younger audience that might not know how the game works. I've sat down and introduced the game to, uh, to certain people in the uh, near recent past and just kind of explained to them how the game works. And some people don't. Some people just say, oh, football. So this, you know, maybe that's a way to get a, a wider audience. And it's kind of brilliant. They've definitely been doing some experimenting this season. Like a couple of weeks ago, one of the games was also. A broadcast on Twitch, and I believe it had a different uh, announcing crew for the the Twitch broadcast. So who who knows what they're going to come up with next? I'm trying to think of what other networks have not yet been tapped. I mean, they they could just do it on TikTok with you know 15 seconds every quarter or whatever. I don't know that. I just hey, that's not a out. bad idea. Just a, just a string of TikTok videos of each play because that's all really all they last, right? <laughs> Just, just kind of scroll through, sli- swipe to the right when you want to go to the next one or swipe up, whatever it is. Oh, I can't man, remember. you could watch the game out of order. It could be a narrative uh, exploration or something like that. But <laughs> Dan and Indy, I love you uh, giving us the wild card roundup. That was excellent. Thank you very much. And he pronounced logo very well, unlike I me know, sometimes. He, we, <laughs> I don't know why you struggle with that word so much. It's actually. four letters. I mean, come on. I know. So good to hear from you, Dan. Let's check back in and see who else gave us a call at 920-3-PAC-GO. Go, Pack, go! Go, Pack, go! What's up, guys? Jared in Colorado, here to remind you that the Bears still suck, and it is awesome. Hey guys, really excited for this week's game. Uh, don't have too much to say today. Uh, just a couple of things of just general excitement. It's Packers playoff football, but more importantly, it's Packers playoff football at home in Lambeau, where it is freezing cold, and we have a West Coast team coming out to Lambeau to try and do their work. Now, not to uh, underestimate the Rams by any means. Uh, personally, I feel like how good the game will be kind of depends on what version of the Rams show up. Uh, overall, the the team has been really hot and cold, uh, really almost no in between. They had some games during the regular season where they were just god-awful. Uh, and then they had other games uh, where they looked like, you know, that high-powered uh, offense that, uh, you know, we got uh, accustomed to seeing when uh, Sean McVay first became their head coach. So, Either way, I still think it's going to be a pretty tough matchup. I mean, it is the playoffs after all, so you can never take anything for granted. Uh, but I feel really good about the Packers' chances on this game, and I'm really excited to see what they have to do. So one thing that's completely unrelated, but I thought was interesting nonetheless, and uh, Aaron Rodgers didn't end up on the injury report at all this entire season. I was watching an interview with him uh, last week, and that was one of the things he said, is that he didn't miss a single practice, and there was no point where he was on the injury report for even like a small 
you know, strain or something like that. So really just goes to show you how, how great our offensive line has been playing all season. And I think that's going to be a big, big boon for, for the team uh, going into the playoffs. So go pack, go green and gold till dead and cold. Can't wait for the game. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you on the game thread on Saturday. Bye. Thank you so very much, Jared, giving us a call with a friendly reminder about the Bears' recent history. And I like how, you know, don't underestimate the Rams, but you never know which version of them are going to show up, the really high-powered ones or the ones that uh, uh, might lose to the Jets any given day, right? Yeah, let's hope it's the latter this weekend. Uh, but I have a feeling that's not going to happen because it's playoffs, man. <laughs> it's win or go home, right? So, you, you know, you have to assume that the former team is going to show up. Uh, I, I hope that you were knocking on wood while you were saying that about Aaron Rodgers there, Jared. Uh, I definitely was. I don't know if you could hear it in the recording when uh, uh, we were listening to the voicemail because I definitely was knock, knocking on wood because, uh, man, something happens this weekend. You know it's going to be your fault. Just saying. It's not going to be saying. anybody's fault but the Packers. But <laughs> since nothing negative is going to happen, it's going to be awesome. And we want to hear from all of you after the Packers hopefully do beat the Rams. Just a reminder, that phone number, 920-3-PACK-GO. That's 920-3-PACK-GO. And we had our weekly poll in the Facebook group at PackersCommunity.com, which you should go ahead and join at PackersCommunity.com. It's a Facebook group. We also put the poll on Twitter at PackersFanPod, at least for now, because, you know, Twitter's smacking people around left and right. So if you can't find us there... We'll still be in the uh, PackersCommunity.com, at least for now. Anyway, ask the question, who do you think will face off in the NFC Championship game? Will it be Bucks at Packers? Will it be Saints at Packers? Or will it be someone else versus whomever? And I just phrased it that way because originally it was going to be this long, drawn-out question. Um, do you think the Packers will win the divisional playoff game this week against the Rams? And if so, do you think the Bucks are going to beat the Saints in Kundal Lambeau, or do you think it's going to be the Saints? <laughs> so you notice I didn't say, who do you think the Packers will play in the NFC Championship game? Because I know right. I've done that type of thing in the past, and uh, you said I need to be a little more realistic. So <laughs> so basically, will it be Bucks at Packers? Will it be Saints at Packers? Or will it be someone else versus someone else? What do you think, Scott, before we go to the listeners? Well, I'm going to speak with my heart and I'm going to speak with my head. My heart wants it to be the Bucks, just because I want to get revenge on Tom Brady for that atrocity that uh, we experienced earlier in the season. If you remember, that was the game I did not get to watch live and in person because I was on a plane on my way down right. to Dallas, Texas. Uh, I did see kickoff. I was wearing my jersey, so it was not my fault. But uh, the, you know, this time I will definitely be in the seat of my chair uh, cheering on the way God intended. But if I were going to go with my head, I would say Saints at Packers uh, is, is more likely to happen. But uh, um, I just want it the other way around. How about you? I'm kind of thinking that it's going to be Bucks at Packers. Tom Brady and Gronk and all those guys, you know, the – Tampa Bay trying to buy themselves a championship like the uh, Yankees used to always do. So I, I think they might pull it off, but we'll have to wait and see. The uh, folks that voted, though, 60% agree with you, Scott, that it's going to be Saints at Packers. 36% said Bucks at Packers. And 4%, and all these votes were on Twitter, by the way, said that it's going to be someone else versus whomever. So I think it was uh, Seahawks or Bears fans that were trolling. But uh, that's the way it is. And so there you go. Yeah, got to love Twitter, right? <laughs> uh, we had some comments on uh, that that poll as well. And first off, Jacob agrees with me. He said, I kind of want the Bucks as a revenge game scenario. So he and I are uh, pretty much on the same page. Sure, Troy also commented and said, Saints too scared from getting kicked around last time and Bucks too wimpy for the cold. Packers win by forfeit, the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Troy. Very well put. Wouldn't that be amazing if we won the divisional round by default or fit? Uh, that'd be awesome. They just don't show up. <laughs> They're like, nah. Uh, <laughs> also, got an email here. Wayne and Scott, go pack, go, go pack, go, go pack, go. So get ready. We will have a Saturday afternoon playoff game about 10 minutes later than the normal mid to late Sunday start time. And I know Wayne is happy because that is his preferred time for the Packers to play. Uh, that's very true. 
Uh, the Packers didn't get to play the Rams this season. The last meeting between these two teams, the Rams defeated the Packers 29-27 to on October 28th, 2018, when Mike McCarthy was still the head coach. Uh, thank you, mystery emailer, for that reminder, because I was at that game. And Sir Troy flew all the way out to Southern California and went to the game with us to watch us lose at the very end. But it was still beautiful because the weather was very warm and that dump of a stadium. I know it's historic, the L.A. Coliseum, but it is a dump. <laughs> Just ask Sir oh, wow. Troy. I mean, compared to a lot of other stadiums. But it was at least 50% Packers fans. I mean, we kept getting out into our phones anytime that you could hear almost the entire stadium going, go Pack, go. So Wow. But the Packers lost. So thanks for that reminder. Uh, back to the email. The Packers have announced that they're going to be letting 6,000 season ticket holders into the game. So how weird is it going to be having no fans at the games almost all season and now all the way up to 6,000 season ticket holders for the playoff game? I, I don't think it's going to be weird. It's just going to feel as close to normal as can be. Right, Scott? Yeah, I mean, 6,000 still isn't a ton of people if you think about it. Because when you've seen the overhead shots, it feels like they're the only fans that were there were like right on the 50 yard line. So if they can spread out and go over the entire stadium, you know, in their season tickets, that might be kind of cool and, uh, you know, get some extra crowd noise. So uh, that's, that's what we need for sure. Oh, I definitely think that's going to be the case because 6,000 Packers fans, that's going to make a big difference. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, this is Stephen Vahiran from Palace Park, Illinois, where the hometown Bears still, you know, it's going to be interesting to hear Scott sing on the podcast. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> well, I Trust think interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting word. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be an atrocity, but uh, I apologize in advance to everybody. Uh, you may want to mute the podcast for about two and a half minutes here shortly. Or if you're like a lot of podcast listeners and you listen at 1.5 or 2x speed, this could be. Very interesting. Oh, um, man. It'll be like chipmunks on speed. Good stuff there. Um, back to the email. Steven says, is it just my imagination, or do we always get West Coast teams to play against in the playoffs? And it does seem like the, it, at least NFC West teams. I mean, I saw the Packers play the Cardinals in the playoffs, and don't remind me about last year's game against San Francisco. And mm -hmm. things like that. Obviously, we've never played the Chargers in the playoffs because, you know, AFC. But uh, And the Seahawks. Mm. There's been some Packers-Seahawks games. that. Ooh, was... I was so glad to see them knocked out, though, man. <laughs> really wasn't expecting that, but I'm glad to have that monkey off our back. Yes. But, hey, better than playing the Chicago Bears for the second time in the last two weeks, even though we'd do a better job of beating the Bears at Lambeau than we did at Soldier Field. But, hey, a win is a win, right? Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to check out for now. And remember, go Pack Go, go Pack Go, go Pack Go. Uh, Stephen Vaharan, thank you for the email. And in the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community group, Jared shared an article about Aaron Rodgers' recent donation of $500,000 to the Small Business Barstool Fund. How That's awesome. I read that story as well. Just fantastic. And Andy made his own Packers Playoff Hype video and he shared the link to it in the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community group as well. And very well done, Andy. Join the group if you're not already a member and watch his hype video, Getting Ready. It's so cool. It was really cool. I watched it a couple times. He he timed the music in in appropriate ways that just was really cool and, and was a great way to get pumped up for the, for the rest of the season. Also, Jacob posted an article regarding the fact that the Packers are planning on allowing around 6,000 season ticket holders to attend the divisional playoff game. So if you'd like to read more on that. Also, Dictus and Rick shared news in a group about the Packers that uh, made this year's All-Pro team, which I believe there's, uh, is it four of them? Or am I thinking of the Pro Bowl team? It's strange that the announcements come out at almost the same time. So mm -hmm. check them out. Yep. As always, thank you for your calls, emails, comments, and support. We do really appreciate it. Uh, you too can join the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community and be part of the conversation at PackersCommunity.com, especially on game day for our live game discussion thread. It is always a ton of fun to uh, throw comments back and forth in there, so be sure to check that out. And now, your number one seeded Green Bay Packers host the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC Divisional Playoff Round Saturday, January 16th at 3.35 p.m. Central Time. 
And all time in the series, this one is a little closer than I thought it was. The Packers do lead 47 to 46 with two ties. So mm-hmm. all time, we're actually closer to the Rams than the Bears, which we are pulling away from in droves. Mm-hmm. And the Packers and Rams have split their only two postseason matchups, one apiece. So interesting. Let's see if this has any bearing because Saturday's weather at Lambeau Field is not going to be confused with LA weather in any way, shape, or form. No, no, no. It's going to be Packers weather, cloudy and around 25 degrees at kickoff, and that's minus 3.9 degrees Celsius. A little chilly. And below freezing for sure. Oh, definitely below freezing. It's going to be a cold one, people. And as with most times when teams come to Lambeau Field in January, you can pretty much count on the Rams players trying to trick themselves into thinking that it's not really cold. It's just in your mind. There's no faking it, people. It's going to be cold. And if the Packers are up in the third quarter, count on seeing Rams players looking more miserable and cold than ever before, dreaming of just getting back to the California beaches. You can count on it. Watch for it in the pregame warmups and so forth. That's how it's going to play out. (laughs) I love it. Let's go ahead and move on to our keys to a Packers victory over the Rams. First off, protect the ball on the ground and in the air. The Rams' defense is no joke, as proven during the victory over the Seahawks this past weekend. They're literally first in the league for yards allowed, points allowed, touchdown passes allowed, and first downs allowed. That's not a, not making that up. That is 100% accurate. But the scariest thing to watch was the turnovers. The Packers must control the football. Hang on to the ball when running, and Rodgers will want to be careful trying to thread the needle against an incredibly dangerous secondary. Bottom line, this game is far from a gimme and one of the toughest challenges we've faced yet. This is no time for overconfidence. Keep our offense in the field and make the Los Angeles defense tired early on in the game. This is crucial if we're going to pull off a W. With that said, the Packers do have the fewest turnovers in the league, 11, which, funny enough, is six fewer than Jared Goff has on his own. So let's hope that trend continues for this game. Wow. Number two, don't underestimate the rookie. Cam Akers has proven to be a serious threat on the ground. Would you believe that the Rams only completed 12 passes against Seattle this past weekend? 12 passes passes. That's in big part to their defense, remember my first key to victory, but also the running game of their rookie who ran for 131 yards and also had 45 receiving yards plus a touchdown. It's time for the defensive line to shake off those bad weeks of poor tackling and close those gaps on the forward front. Our secondary should be able to handle the Rams, especially considering we still don't know which of their two quarterbacks will be healthier by game time. This is going to be a defensive struggle on the ground more than anything, and the pack should be prepared for that. Lastly, The red zone is the new end zone. Red zone, gold zone, call it whatever you want. But on offense, the pack just needs to get it inside the 20. This season, they've turned 80% of their red zone stances into touchdowns, which is kind of insane to say. The matchups are pretty insane, but if Rodgers spreads the ball around to others outside of Adams, this should be completely doable. We don't need the long bombs. Just move the chains, get us inside the 20, and then into the end zone. And there you have it. Smells like victory to me looking good yeah and i i think with all things considered and trying to be as realistic as possible i do think the packers are going to win this one 31 to 21 Uh, i think that this one's going to be a lower scoring game you're looking at the number one offense versus the number one defense again that's just stats pure stats number one offense versus number one defense a little lower scoring game i think so i'm going to say packers 21 Rams 17 again I think the Packers will pull it off, but it's not going to be easy. Not that it matters in terms of our 2020 season wager of fun, because Wayne has already won with a score of 9-5, to unless he wants to count this week's game for four points and tie it up, but I don't think he's going to let me do that. So with that said, it, much to my chagrin, it is time for me to cash in on my, uh, our wager, because obviously I lost. So without further ado, here is my rendition as requested by you guys the Packers fan podcast uh written by Wayne himself parody lyrics of Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons talk 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 
Talk like a fan. Oh, I love Culver's, burgers with the fry eyes. Getting cold custards with my friends. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah, ooh-ah. But my co hosts eat up. Stuck out on the West Coast. I'll wear the jersey that he lends. I said, talk like a fan. Rock like a fan. Talk like a Packers fan. Pick in game scores. Packers win more. So talk like a fan, my friend. Talk, talk, talk. By week, baby, I don't I mean maybe. Gonna win some games and how? Ooh, 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 ooh. Losing teams be crying. Merchandise I'm buying. Green and gold's in fashion now. I'm gonna talk like a fan, rock like a fan. Talk like a Packers fan. Pick and game scores. Packers win more. So talk like a fan, my friend. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 talk. Amazing, Scott Clark. <laughs> this is something that I never thought I would hear on any podcast, let alone right here on your Packers fan podcast, the unofficial fan podcast by and for fans of your 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers, soon to be your 14-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers. Thank you for that beautiful rendition of a timeless welcome, classic. I apologize for everyone's eardrums. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not uh, that was that was very difficult to do. Next year we need to do something without falsetto because oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with, with something good. That's for sure. Uh, that was that was a good idea and uh, taking it back even a little reference in there. Thanks for singing along with mentioning of the uh, 2019 wager o fun, which I barely won. But uh, barely someday yeah. I'll make it to out your way and go to Culver's and bring my Henderson jersey and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So. I got my Clark jersey. We, we definitely have some photo ops planned for sure. Oh, heck yeah. Well, Dan and Indy already gave us a rundown of the uh, of the playoffs weekend, but I got to take a minute just to talk about the Browns for a minute. I got to admit, I was cheering for the Browns going into that game. Did not expect that to happen. I missed the first two scores. I was I I don't even remember where I was. I didn't get to the game right on time, and I walk in, and they're up fourteen to zero. Weren't they up twenty eight to zero at one point? Like they yes. had like four scores. I'm like, is this the Browns and this is the Steelers? And sure enough, third quarter, fourth quarter, fourth quarter rolled around. It really started to look like the Steelers might make a glorious comeback, but uh, they did they did stave them off in the end. But uh, man. It's kind of cool seeing the Browns being relevant again. I'm not going to lie. Oh, absolutely. That was so much fun because I'm just kind of tired of the Steelers and kind of like the Browns and everything they're doing. And yeah, it was just stunning. It's like, really? Another interception? Ben Roethlisberger. This was the team that started the season 11-0 and and people were talking about nobody's going to beat them. They are going to be the team that wins the Super Bowl with a record of 19-0. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. uh, the wheels just flew off that bus yeah. Stairway to what? Stairway to home. Yeah, definitely. They're safely cozy there as we speak. And how about the Washington football team almost beating Tom Brady and Gronk and Antonio Brown and everybody else they've picked up for the team? That third string backup quarterback, Taylor Heineke, I think they pronounced mm-hmm. it. Dude, yep. that guy. He's got a future because he was doing some good things, flying and holding out the, the ball, touching the pylon and all sorts of good things and scrambling around. He he did not look like somebody that was not the official starter of an NFL team. 
Oh, no. And I think that uh, next year will be definitely interesting for the Washington football team or whatever we're calling them at this time next year. (laughs) Because are they really going to stick with Washington football team? I guess I'm kind of used to it by now. Yeah, for one more year. Yeah, but whenever I see people tweet about them or talk about them with abbreviations and they just call them WFT, in my mind, I always see the the WTF and I'm like, what, yep. what is going on? So they got to get a name and get one soon. There's I agree. That's a good ones. Oh, and this just in, this just in, the Bears still, you know. <laughs> Wow. I, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't know who to cheer for in that game, honestly, but it was a that was an entertaining game to watch. That was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, they only had three points the whole game until the final play when time ran out. They got the touchdown as time ran out, and they don't even get to kick the extra point because irrelevant. It was just right. so Bears. And remember, yeah. Jimmy Graham went to the Bears, and earlier this season he said, don't, you know, don't get me wrong i had a good time with the packers but now i'm with a team that thinks only of super bowls like really (laughs) are you are you sure (laughs) i don't know i i've i've been pretty nice to my bears fans friends around here have but uh not the rest of us Well, if you guys love video games as much as I do, I do have another podcast I'd like to remind you about called The Gaming Outsider, where we chat about what else? Video games. And on this week's episode, we are talking about our hopes and dreams for the year 2021 in the gaming industry, what we'd like to see happening. Uh, We talk about some realistic ones, as well as some uh, pipe dream dreams that we'd like to see. Maybe not really happen, but we'd really love to happen. Also, I played the latest game from Harmonix, who, if you remember the game Guitar Hero, they made Guitar Hero back in the day. They have a new music rhythm game called Fuser, which lets you make music matchups like a festival DJ. It's kind of cool, so uh, be sure to check out my impressions of that. Our website, if you'd like to see it, is thegamingoutsider.com, and you can check out our podcast at the same place you listen to this fine show. And it's unfortunate that that game is already out because after they hear your vocal stylings on this episode of the podcast, (laughs) they may need to meld you into Fuser. No. I see what you did there, though. It's true. We go with the value for value model here at the Packers Fan Podcast. It's a proven model and it works really well. If your budget allows for it, we love to have your support at Patreon dot com slash Packers fan podcast. You can even get cool Packers fan podcast swag at some of the higher levels. And we want to send out huge thanks and hearty go pack goes to Dan Dyer for his support of the show at the Jim Ringo inspired pledge level and Bryant, your longtime Patreon support at the legendary Willie Wood level is MVP worthy as well. Go pack go. And thank you to you, sir, as well as go pack goes to our friends in the Texas only green Bay Packers fanatics group. Your AR-12 level support is fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, and GoPack goes to our Brett Favre level Patreon supporters. That includes Andre in LA, Lawrence Harvey, and Jeff Summerfield. GoPack goes, thanks, goes to our Curly Lambo level monthly supporters. That's Hank Davis from the TPE Network of Podcasts, Remy LaVictoire, Beth Mentink, Joe Christensen, and Matt Haig. Thanks for all of your support. We appreciate it more than we can express here in words. As a reminder, we are the unofficial Packers fan podcast, not yet affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers, but we would absolutely love to be. Please be sure to reach out to us if you'd like that to make that happen. Remember to have our voicemail feedback hotline number of 920-3-PAC-GO programmed into your phones and ready to call us right after the game while your voice is still shot from all of the excitement. Definitely, because that makes a voicemail even better. And then... If it's still around, please join us on Twitter at Packers Fan Pod. Follow Scott at GoCast Scott and follow me at Wayne Henderson. And now the Texas only Green Bay Packers fanatics sending out some Go Pack goes of their own to help us take on the Los Angeles Rams. This is Dawn down here in Texas, aka Granny Cheese. Hi, I'm James. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Melissa. Hi, I'm Susan. Hi. I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Lisa Montgomery, and we want to say, Go Pack Go! Go!